Mm. Great job, thank you. Hello, everyone. So to continue on the theme, this will be really fun here, is I want to talk a little bit about the park. She talked about how this would all connect to the park. And, um, and so I want to introduce one thing, is that we are now in the age of third places. The, is it not slow? Oh, we've got to switch it up at that end, I think. So we get our slides showing. Um, Hang on just a second here, we gotta switch. No, that's not it, we're getting there. Looks like I'm preaching to the masses. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, there we go. And speaking of community living rooms, this is a big deal now, and it's brought about by the age of third places. The first place is the place we live, it's our home. The second place is the place we go to work. The third place is the place we go to hang out. It's the place, it is your community living room. And in this case, this has been working in Europe for centuries. In Italy, one of the most visited countries on earth, every town is built around a piazza. And that is, has people there 360 days a year or more. And that is their community living room. And this is coming to the United States. Everywhere you will start to see gathering places. Downtowns need to be about people, not cars. And the goal is to make Heber, downtown Heber a destination that you go to, not through. And that is the goal. And so you want to create a, a community living room. And I want to give you two examples that are not that far away that have about similar populations to you. One is in Caldwell, Idaho. Population in Caldwell, when we started this process, was 50,000. It's grown by 13,000 in just five years. And it's largely on the heels of what you're about to see. It's about 45 minutes west of Boise, and it used to be that Caldwell was the dregs of the Boise out, that area, the Treasure Valley area. As a matter of fact, you go from Boise, which is high tech, it's got a great downtown, you go to Meridian, you go to Nampa, you start going further west, and all of a sudden you come to Caldwell, and in their downtown Caldwell, it was 80% vacant. So it's exactly what we're talking about on losing the heart. Now, there's a waiting list. So what happened is they created their CAMS, so to speak. It's called Destination Caldwell. And they did their, all their branding and everything. And what they did is their redevelopment agency, very much like the CRA, did this. You can see that big space there. It's now a plaza. But you can tell there was old buildings there. They had to, the city bought those. They tore them down. And then these were the backs of buildings that you see there. And now those are all full of restaurants, so they turned this into Indian Creek Plaza. And it is an amazing thing what it did to transform the town. <clears throat> all of a sudden, now there's like seven restaurants that gather around the plaza. There's a big main stage, which you're about to get here in, in Heber. Um, you can see kids up on the stage playing the giant chess sets. And 250 days a year, there is activity happening on Indian Creek Plaza. Before this, Caldwell always went to Boise for everything, or Nampa, or, or Meridian. And now, all of a sudden, Boise and those areas are coming to Caldwell. It changed everything. So you've got the cornhole tosses, you've got food vendors there, you've got food trucks. It is a place that is full of activity and full of life year round. It's the place for locals to hang out. So this is not just about tourism. However, when it comes to tourism, the number one reason people travel is to visit friends and family. When they visit you, where do you take them? And that was the point. They even have a splash pad there. It's not a real big one, but still it's water on those hot summer days. But what's really fascinating is during the winter, that there is an ice ribbon. Now, there's lots of places with ice ribbons. There's lots of places in Utah, but every community, Midway should have its ice rink. Heber should have its ice ribbon. Everybody should be playing in this game. This is about your local residents. 
and your visitors. So they created this in Caldwell. And what's interesting is they make more than $250,000 a year just renting ice skates and they have to dole them out because it gets too busy. When you watch the news in, in Boise, they're gonna talk about the ice and, and all the Christmas lights. The city does a million and a half Christmas lights every year. It changed everything. And um, I mean, it's just an amazing destination. And where people come to hang out, retail follows. So the problem is with most downtowns, we do farmer's markets. So that might be 12 days of the year, 13 days, you know, one a week. Or you might do a first Friday event. Well, and when I go to downtowns and we add up, how many days do you have activities in downtowns? It adds up to about 30. That's not enough to sustain one single retail business. You need 250 days of activity. Well, there's 120 days of just ice let alone the splash pad and summer events and things. So that's Caldwell. But I want to show you one more. This is Rapid City, South Dakota. They were one of the pioneers in this whole plaza community living room thing. Population 76,000. They're about 40 minutes away from Mount Rushmore. And what happened is people would go there. It's the Great American Road Trip. You know, you got Mount Rushmore, you got, you've got the Badlands, you've got, I mean, you name it. Custer State Park, Deadwood, Sturgis, largest motorcycle rally all within half hour drive. People would come to Rapid City, they, they'd stay in hotels, they'd get up in the morning and leave. And their locals were, when their visitors came in to visit locals, where were they taking them to? All the attractions, they weren't taking them downtown. And so they had about 30% vacancy rate in their downtown, and now all of a sudden it's a major draw to the city. And so in this case, this is it. This is what it looks like. That used to be a 65 space parking lot. It's about one acre. They turned it into Main Street Square. This was on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Car shows started coming, motorcycle shows, quilt guilds started showing up, everything. <clears throat> and this is Main Street Square. You can see how busy it is. And this is activated 300 days a year. And so it's not just events, it's just activities. It's the place you go to hang out, whether it's farmer's markets, public markets, art fairs, you name it. They've got a splash pad. It's about 1,500 to 2,000 square feet. You can shut that off when you have concerts and things going on. The kids love playing in it. At night, it turns into a, a water feature. But so you can see what they did here by creating this activity place. You can see there's a big hotel in the top left corner. That's the Alex Johnson. When we, when we started this whole Main Street Square project, only the first four, four floors were even open. The rest of it was basically abandoned. It is now fully refurbished at, uh, refurbished at tens of millions of dollars and runs at about 90% occupancy year round. People were coming to downtown. So this might be it during the summer. You can see the splash pad there in the background, but this is it during the winter. That's about 8,000 square feet. It's a little bigger than the one in Rockefeller Center. You know what, they have to dole out the ice skates because it gets too busy. And so, and there's the water feature at night. As a matter of fact, they do other things besides just the water and the ice. They do movies on the square. The average attendance is 3,500. And on Monday nights during the peak season, during the spring, summer, and fall months, they do movies on the square. As a matter of fact, somebody did a media post once that said, I grew up in Rapid City and it's never as cool as it is now. As a matter of fact, the average age of a person buying a home in Rapid City dropped 12 years after they built Main Street Square. Young families were coming back. So what about Heber City? The first thing we did is we looked at your demographics and you see there's a circle there. Within just three miles of your park downtown, you have 26,000 residents. If you go out seven miles, you'll see 34,000 residents live within this area. If you go out 15 miles, which does include Park City, but it still doesn't reach the Interstate 80, you'll see you have 58,000, you have almost 60,000 people in your area. So when we talk about, oh, there might be an ice rink in Midway, you know what, and, and if you did one in Rapid City, you know, you only get about 100 people on the ice at a time. You have 60,000 people, there's plenty to go around. And we wanna make Heber a destination. So this is the initial idea. 
So this is your park there. You can see Main Street off to the right there. And, and you see 300 South, you can see 300 North is up there. Um, and so this is the initial idea for this. And I wanna go into a little bit more detail on this. Um, you'd have year-round vendors and artisans. So you can see those little blue squares there. If we zoom in on that a little bit, let's see, let me see if I can get that. Uh, there we go. You can see that in the red circle there, or the red square. Wouldn't it be cool if you had a place for local artisans, local vendors, almost permanent? These are in Bryant Park, which they did for the locals in New York City. They call these jewel boxes. Most of them are about 10 foot square. And you could have artisans in there. You could have uh, musicians in there. You could have people, bookstores in there all different kinds of shops. It makes your downtown a business incubator for small businesses to start. And hopefully they'll outgrow their little 10 by 10 jewel box and move into an inline store in the middle of downtown. So these are the kinds of things you could do and you have a square to do it on. And you'll have that alleyway eventually, that will be that block um, that goes up into downtown. And so this just spreads it out. So if we go back to that drawing and we, we look at, we might have restaurants right on the plaza. If you go to Europe, every single plaza is monetized. There are retail shops, there are restaurants, it might be a little bakery, it might be a cupcake shop, an ice cream shop. It could be, you know, you know what, and you, by the way, you know what's coming into downtowns? Believe it or not, this is the age of Etsy style businesses in downtown. What's popular in downtowns are things like the butcher, the baker, and you got it, the candlestick maker. Those are the shops that are coming back into downtowns. They can't, you don't do that on Amazon. You do it in downtowns. And so in this one here, then we have a depot there. You might say, well, wait a second, we already have a train depot. Wouldn't it be cool, you have all this traffic on, on Main Street. Wouldn't it be cool if we created a depot here, not to replace that one, but wouldn't it be cool if we could get people to start in downtown and then from here we could shuttle them out to the other depot? Wouldn't it be cool if they had a place where they could buy tickets for the train right here and they'd have a gift shop or visitor information and, and public restrooms right here on the square? And so then we might even run a little trolley. Now it wouldn't be on tracks, it would be rubber tires. And we'd run that out every 15 minutes or so out to the depot in that tourism district as that gets developed out there where the ball fields are. But the point is rather than create another downtown, why don't we join this one to that one and create the best of both worlds? And so if we zoom in on that close, you can see there's the depot be right there in the middle. Um, you can see out in front, we've got our little train there. Um, and we've got the playground is still there and you can see where that's at and you can see in front of the depot There's all kinds of plaza areas and we'll talk a little bit more about that But wouldn't it be cool if you had this right in downtown So they have this central place we can hang out. It's got waiting areas inside. You can see the little train right there um, and, and so you might have some kind of shuttles, whether it's like this, whether it's just a trolley uh, that's on rubber tires that would run people back and forth between 300, between all the way out to the depot out there. There's little restaurants and things that go on out there and it's hard for them to survive. I gotta tell you, when I was here in 2017 and secret shopping the city, we turned down 300 South. We went like a block and a half and turned around and came back because we thought, we're in residential area, let's get back to the commercial area. We didn't realize if we kept going, we'd run into where Old Town Heber is and where the depot is. We eventually found it. But wouldn't it be great to create these linkages and then really make this shine? So if we go back to this rendering again, in the middle of this rendering, and by the way, these are all conceptual. This is not written in stone. This is all where we're having good conversations and good debates about all these things. But right there is a splash pad. As a matter of fact, if we zoom in, it's about 2,500 square feet. So it would be probably about the size of this theater in here, this area of the theater. Wouldn't it be cool to have a splash pad that size where you could accommodate dozens of kids, if not hundreds of kids? 
and and they all go to music and everything and and it's all flush mounted so if you have concert stuff you just shut them off you can walk there's no tripping hazards or anything there and splash pads are a big deal but they should be in areas where they're monetized splash pads need to be in downtowns this is economic development. We need people downtown so they can buy food, they can eat, they can drink, they can visit your businesses. I mean, this is in Spanish Fork. And a lot of these are out in other park areas, but we want them to be right in the middle of your business district. You know, wouldn't it be cool if you had something like this with a train depot there instead of that building, then you've got your splash pad out in front. And water in the summer is absolutely ideal. And that might run 120 days a year. But if we back up again to the plan and we scoom in, you notice there's a circle around there. That could be an ice ribbon. It would not compete with, with any other ice ribbons. I'm sure they're, they're all over Utah. But this is for the people of Heber. This is for you and your visitors and your friends to come. And so if we take a look at that, you notice down below there, there's big fire pits there. Not everybody is an ice skater. So what happens if the parents are watching the kids ice skate? Where do they go? Where do they, do they just stand there? Do they sit in a chair? Well, here you've got a whole plaza area with fire pits there. They've got restaurants. They could grab hot chocolate, hot cider. You've got little trellis and arbors there. So this is a, all a whole gathering area. So that if you're not into ice skating, you still will come to the plaza. You'll still come to the square and hang out. That little house right there kind of by the, is where the Zamboni would be that would groom the ice and there'd be an ice dump there for the ice it scrapes off. So these are activities. And by the way, that might run 120 days a year. One thing I noticed is one thing you have to do is you need, you need activities downtown at least 250 days a year. If you add water, there's 120. If you add ice, there's another 120. We're at 240 of 250 days a year. Now we add movies on the square. We add our farmer's markets there. We start adding all these other activities, all the vendors there. All of a sudden, you become a place that people are hanging out year round. So these are all the ideas that can really make Heber sing and will make you a destination, not a pass-through location. So if I keep going, and, and you see this back to the big plan again. And I want to talk about the other end. And right there is where there would be a main stage. And by the way, the funding is already in place. So this could happen in phases. This main stage could be happening, hopefully it'll happen next year. And so you'll have that there. That's what's in the middle. On each side of that, that's on 200 South. And by the way, there is a lane behind those. So there's emergency vehicle access. And so this is all that, and so what now you have is you have your band shell that's up on the left, left corner there, and you'd have your main stage. So you could have a band playing over in the band shell, and then while another one is setting up on the main stage, and then while they're playing the main stage, somebody can go set up on the band shell, and your audience is out there in front of both of them. On each side, you see some gray boxes there. Those could be restaurants, retail shops. You want to monetize your plaza. And these won't be chains. These will be local businesses. And we'll bring customers to, your, to you at least 250 days a year. And so this creates just amazing gathering space. And so if we just keep going on this, you can, you can just see that we've got, there's the main stage right there. And by the way, the stage would even have it, notice up, up there where the alley is, eventually that'll be a pedestrian walkway in the Envision 2050 plan, but you'd actually have that people could have entertainment going that way as well as this way, using the stage to face both ways to connect all the elements of downtown. And then, and so you can see there'd still be vehicle, some vehicle access back there. Um, if we zoom in really close, there you go, we might have cafe, we might have desserts, some kind of food, we might have, you know, the candle shop, a restaurant or two little cafes all in this area. And it's all plazas, it's all outdoor dining and seating, and during the winter you put up the fire pits, those, times of act, those types of activities. And so this is just how you get this whole thing started. The city already owns the park. You don't have to redevelop it, and it's still a park, but now we're activating it, we're programming it. And you see those little dots that are on there, those are about 20 feet apart. And if you were to lift up like the little manhole cover or the paver that covers that, underneath would be power, 
would be water and, and probably an anchor so that when you have inclement weather, you can anchor tents and things on the square. You can bring food trucks on the square, car shows, you name it. So that whole square could be activated. And wouldn't it be cool to have these? You know, unfortunately, you have great weather, but you don't have 250 days worth of great weather. So that's where coming in and being able to do these kinds of activities does not preclude anybody from coming and hanging out on the square. And so all of these would be there. And so the anchors and all those things would already be built into the plaza so that you can configure it however you want. And if you go up to like Missoula, Montana, that one's a permanent covering. That's at Karis Park, that's their plaza. Um, and, and it just works. And by the way, they have radiant heaters up inside their, inside their covering. So those are the kinds of things we're bringing to Heber. And so with this, we also need access across Main Street and we want decorative crosswalks, things that will slow vehicles down because now this is your community living room. So you can see these pictures showing up on the right. Those are actually designs stamped into the asphalt. You can run car chains over them. You can do snow removal, you name it. That's a Huntington Beach, California. That's how they decorate it. It's not paint. It is actually embossed down in the asphalt. It can be whatever design you want. And it will slow vehicles down as they're coming down Main Street. So my last one is programming. The key to the success of any downtown isn't just creating a plaza, it's creating activity. Wouldn't it be great if you had this plaza and then you had things like ice skating and, and the splash pad? I mean, all the things you see coming up on your screen right now could take place there. And there's, this is a project you're gonna start next year. The stage is already in, is coming. And so now it's, well, what can we do in the next phase to keep growing this? But everything you see coming up on your screen right now are elements of what could be at your plaza, movies on the square, you name it. And the goal is you change it up every couple of weeks. You want people at home saying, wonder what's going on in the square this week. So you want to change it out. So you might have things like food. You might even have the taste of Utah, the taste of Heber Valley, and you have food trucks and restaurants all there. And you put out tables and chairs through the whole plaza. And tables and chairs you can get pretty inexpensively. You'd be surprised. You know, you could put out things, just a place to hang out. These are called spun chairs. I actually sat in one and thought for sure I was gonna take a header. I didn't, but it was pretty cool spinning around in those things. It's just places for people to hang out. Can you imagine having a couple of dozen fire pits during the winter months? Well, if they're not skating or if they're doing anything, maybe have a Christmas tree for us and people can just get hot chocolate, sit in front of a little fire pit. This is beyond the two fire pits in front of the depot out in the plaza. But all of these are, are things you could do to create a place to hang out, to eat, and just spend time with each other. Then there's artisans in action. What a great place to have glass blowers or chainsaw carvers or to have potters come in and do pottery festivals. Wouldn't it be great if people could come in and learn how to watercolor or paint and you have artisans actually working on the square. The guy right here is doing, is doing stained glass and they sell their wares there. But people are also learning from them. I mean, you could do craft booths. You could even have booths that you rent out to people, other local, so if you don't have those little glass ones, you might have times when you have 100 vendors out there from all over Utah making things, or all over the valley at least, making things and being able to sell them there. And so you can, you can purchase them, you can lease them out to, to different small businesses. I mean, these are all things that you could do to make this the central hangout place. And so you have some of these booths available. Games, I mean, it doesn't matter what your taste is, you could go there with a the family, and if one person's doing one thing, another person could be doing another thing, there is really something for everyone. Um, when it comes to games, wouldn't it be cool to have a bunch of these four score, you know, um, like tic-tac-toe on steroids? Wouldn't it be great to have the big chess sets like this, have three or four of those? I mean, this would be fantastic. Uh, this is in Asheville, North Carolina. They got chess sets all over their downtown. 
you know, and, and I mean, look at that for, how you like that for Scrabble, am I getting that right? Um, all, the, all these types of games. And once again, here's the four score. There's giant Jenga blocks. You know, you can buy those for like $79. They're like five feet tall. But all of these are the kinds of activities. So one might be eating, somebody can play a game, somebody might be learning something. And I gotta tell you that every plaza I've seen with hula hoops is a huge hit. I still haven't figured out how to make those things work. But you'd be surprised. That whole thing on the right there where you hang them off, it's got jump ropes, it's got hula hoops and everything. It's a few hundred dollars. I mean, and then you could do the checkers. And one of my favorite things I saw, I first saw it in St. George, was Imagination Playground. These are like Lincoln Logs. Okay, if you remember Lincoln Logs, you're dating yourself. But these are made out of foam and you could build things. Wouldn't it be cool if you had those out during spring break for the kids and you had it out during the summer? So it's always changing. And that is the key ingredient to this, is to have them always changing. It's a place where you learn things. As you move to becoming a dark sky city, doing your lights so they always project down and set out, you could do all kinds of stargazing events. You could have a portable library on the plaza. And then of course there's music. And if they're not on the main stage or if they're not on the, um, uh, the band shell, then great, we'd have musicians, musicians in two or three different locations there. And by the way, none of this is amplified music. You know, great place. I mean, if you go to 16th Street in Denver, they've got pianos lining the street. And having musical instruments like this that are just built into the park, into the plaza, would be fantastic ideas. And then finally, recreation. We've seen plazas that even bring in portable skateboard parks. You know, and they set them, tame them down. Now, if it's all lawn areas, it's hard to do that, but on paved areas, you could easily do that. Do the cornhole tosses. Do the things like badminton. You know, this is great. Um, and we were working in Canmore, Alberta, next to the Rocky Mountains. They had this exercise equipment outside, and they were using it in the middle of the winter. Their skiers were out there with all their ski gear working on the exercise equipment. So it's health, it's fitness. I mean, and if we take everything that you've seen, Everything you've seen, as far as all those activities, when I said, said programming, here's the list. Let's keep adding to the list. If we add up all that stuff, and so we have stuff that we can change out, you know what? You can buy all of that for $76,000, all of it. Now you have to have a place where you can store it. You have staff that brings it around and switches it out. You can even have sponsors sponsor. Hey, all the events you see this week on the square sponsored by such and such law firm or restaurant or city or whoever. And so the trick is to change it up every two weeks. So here's the thing. You have an Envision Central Heber 2050 plan. That is the goal. There's no reason it's starting right now. You have to start with the nucleus. The one challenge Heber City has is you have no nucleus. I mean, I'm staying at the, at the Holiday Inn Express down there, and at that Holiday Inn Express, I have to drive just to get to Walmart. You know, and so you don't really have a place where you can just park and stay and walk up Main Street or down Main Street or across Main Street and make it pedestrian friendly. When you get the bypass, wouldn't it be great to have bike lanes downtown? You know, and we could, could, we could even see a vendor here renting e-bikes. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, it'd be cool for me. Some of you want to actually do the work. But these are the things that you could do. This would be Utah's best gathering place. And it is something you can start today. Now, it takes a while before you do splash pads and raise the money and everything, but with that stage, you can start your programming, you can start utilizing your park for more than just a park, and that can happen right now. So this whole Envision Central Eber 2020, it kicks off now. I mean, you're already part of this, and that is what is so cool about this effort. Um, and, um, and so this is really the first big anchor project that would bring you together and create a place right downtown, a central gathering spot. And then we work over in the tourism district, which is where the depot is and the ball fields and all of those. So this is the start to that. And with that, I'll turn this back over to Matt. Thank you very much. <laughs>